so is here. God give your graces both a happy and a joyful time of day. Much needed, sister. Whither away? No further than the tower. And as I guess, upon the like devotion as yourselves to congratulate the gentle princes there. My sister, thanks. We'll enter all together. And in good time, here the lieutenant comes. <coughs> Master Lieutenant, pray you by your leave. How doth my son, the prince, and the son of York? Right well. Dear madam, by your patience, I may not suffer you to visit them. The king has strictly charged to the contrary. So the king? Who's that? I uh, mean the Lord Protector. <laughs> the Lord protect him from that kingly title. I am their mother. Who shall bar me from them? <laughs> I am their father's mother. I will see them. Bring them to our sights. No, madam, no. I will not leave it so. I'm bound by oath, and therefore, pardon me. Come, madam. You must straight to Westminster, there to be crowned Richard's royal queen. Oh, cut my lace asunder, else I'll swoon at this dead killing news. Oh, and these frightful tidings. Oh, unpleasing news. Fear not, your majesty. How fares your grace? Stanley, speak not to me. Get thee gone. Death and destruction dogs thee at thy heels. If thou wilt outstrip death and go across the seas, live with thy son, Richmond. Go! Hide thee from this slaughterhouse, lest thou increase the number of the dead! Full of wise care, is this your counsel, madam? Take swift advantage of the hours. You shall have letters to meet you on the way from my son. Oh, ill dispersing wind of misery. Oh, my accursed womb. The bed of death. A cockatrice hast thou hatched to the world, whose unavoided eye is murderous. Come, come, I in all haste was sent. I would to God that the enclosing verge of gold and metal that must round my brow were rattled steel to steer me through the brains and die ere man can save God save the Queen. Go, poor soul. I envy not thy glory. <clears throat> no? Why? When he that is my husband now came to me, I looked in Richard's face. This was my wish. Be thou accursed. Lo, within so small a time, my heart grew captive to his funny words, and I proved the subject of my own soul's curse. For never yet one hour in his bed did I enjoy the golden dew of sleep. He hates me for my father, and will no doubt shortly be rid of me. Poor heart. Go thou to Richmond, and good fortune guide thee. Go thou to Richmond. And good angels tend thee. Go thou to sanctuary, and good thoughts possess thee. Hide in my grave, where peace and rest lie with me. Too many years of sorrow have I seen, each hour's joy racked with a week of teen. Stay, yet look back with me into the tower. Pity, you ancient stones, those tender babes whom envy hath immured within your walls. Rough cradle for such pretty little ones. Rude ragged nurse, old son of playfellow for such tender princes. Use my babies well. So foolish sorrows, they just don't fail. My gracious sovereign, thus high by thy advice and thy assistance is King Richard seated. But shall we wear these honours for a day, or shall they last, and we rejoice in them? Still live they and forever let them last. Oh! 
Buckingham. Now do I play the top. Young Edward lives. My loving lord. I say I would be king. And so you are, my thrice renowned lord. But young Edward lives. True noble king. Cousin, thou wert not one to be so dull, shall I be plain? I wish the bastards dead and would have it suddenly performed. What sayest thou? Speak suddenly, be brief. Your grace may do your pleasure. Tart, tart. Say, have I thy consent that they shall die? Give me some pause, some breath before I speak positively in this. I'll resolve you here in presently. I reach in Buckingham, grow circumspect. Catesby! My lord. Knowest thou not any whom corrupting gold would tempt into a close exploit of death? I know a discontented gentleman. Gold will no doubt tempt him to anything. What is his name? His name, my lord. Is Tyrrell. <laughs> <gasps> I partly know the man. <laughs> the deep, revolving, witty Buckingham no longer shall be neighbour to my counsel. Hath he so long held out with me untired? And stops he now for breath? How now, what news with you? No, my loving lord, the Marcus Dorset, as I hear, is fled to Richmond in the part where he abides. Gatesby. Rumour it's abroad. That Anne, my wife, is sick and like to die. Look how thou dreamest, I say again, give out that Anne, my wife, is very grievous sick and like to die about it. For it stands me much upon to stop all hopes whose growth may damage me. I must be married to my brother's daughter, or else my kingdom stands on brittle glass. Murder her brothers and then marry her, uncertain way of gain. But I am so far in blood that sin will pluck on sin. Tear falling pity dwells not in this eye. Is thy name Tyrrell? James Tyrrell, and your most obedient subject. Art thou indeed? Prove me, my gracious lord. Darest thou resolve to kill a friend of mine? Please you, but I had rather kill two enemies. Well, there thou hast it. Two deep enemies, foes to my rest, and my sweet sleep's disturbers are they that I would have thee deal upon. Tyrrell, I mean those bastards in the tower. Let me have open means to come to them, and soon I'll rid you of the fear of them. There is no more but so. Say it is done, and I will love thee for it. It is done, my gracious lord. My lord, I have considered in my mind the late request you did sound me in. Well, let that pass. Dorset is fled to Richmond. <coughs> I hear the news. Stanley, he's your wife's son. Look to it. My lord, I claim thy gift. My due by promise, the earldom of Hereford. Stanley! Look to your wife! If she convey letters to Richmond, you shall answer it. My lord, what says your highness to my just request? As I remember, Henry the Sixth did prophecy that Richmond should be king when Richmond was a little peevish boy. A king, perhaps, perhaps. My lord. The bard of Ireland told me once I should not live long after I saw Richmond. My lord! What's a clock? Upon the stroke of ten. Aye, but what is a clock? Upon the stroke of ten. Well, there, let it strike. Why let it strike? Because that's like a jack thou keepest the stroke betwixt thy begging and my meditation. My lord. I'm not in a vein. Why then resolve me whether you will or no? Tut, tut. Thou troublest me. I am not in the vein.
Is it thus? Made him king for this! To break not what my fearful head is on. The act is done. The most arch deed of piteous massacre that ever yet this land was guilty of. <sighs> thus lay the gentle babes. Thus, thus girdling one another within their alabaster, innocent arms and in their summer beauty kissed each other. A book of prayers on their pillow lay, which almost changed my mind. Oh, but oh, the devil! We slaughtered them! The most replenished sweet work of nature that from the prime creation e'er she framed. Hence both are gone with conscience and remorse. All hail, my gracious sovereign. Kind Tyrrell, am I happy in thy news? Be happy then, for it is done. But didst thou see them dead? I did, my lord. And buried, gentle Tyrrell. <coughs> Chaplain of the tower hath buried them, but where to say the truth I do not know. Come to me, Tyrrell, soon after supper, or thou shalt tell me the process of their death. Meantime, think how I may do thee good. I humbly take my leave. The sons of Edward sleep in Abraham's bosom, and Anne, my wife, I've bid the world good night. <laughs> now, for I know the Breton Richmond aims at young Elizabeth, my brother's daughter, and by that knot looks proudly o'er the crown. <laughs> to her I go, a jolly thriving wooer. My lord, good news or bad that thou comes in so bloody? Oh, bad news, my lord. Buckingham bats by the hardy Welshman is in the field and still his power increases. Buckingham troubles me. Buckingham and his rash levied army. Go, must the men. My counsel is my shield. We must be brief when traitors break the field. Now prosperity begins to mellow and drop into the rotten mouth of death. Here in these confines slyly have I looked to watch the waning of mine enemies. Oh, Who comes oh my poor princess! Oh, my tender babes! Hover about me with your airy wings! So many miseries have crazed my voice that my woe-weary tongue is still and mute. <laughs> oh, wilt thou, O oh God, fly from such gentle lambs and throw them in the entrails of the walls? Dead life, blind <laughs> sight, poor Living ghost, rest thy unrest on England's lawful <laughs> earth, unlawfully made drunk with innocent blood. Oh, that thou wouldst as soon afford a grave as thou could yield a melancholy seat. Then would I hide my bones and not rest them here. <laughs> oh, who has any cause to mourn for we? <laughs> if ancient sorrows be most reverent, give mine the benefit of seniority. And all your woes again by viewing mine. I had an Edward till a Richard killed him. I had a husband till a Richard killed him. Thou hast an Edward, thou hast a Clarence too. From forth the hell of thy womb hath crept a hellhound that doth hunt us all to death. Oh, Harry's wife, triumph not in my woes. God witness with me, I have wept for thine. Bear me. I am hungry for revenge, and now I cloy me with beholding it. Thy Edward is dead that stabbed my Edward. Thy other Edward dead to quit my Edward. Thy Clarence, he is dead. 
and the beholders of this frantic play, the adulterate Hastings, rivers grey, untimely smothered in their dusky graves. Richard yet lives, but at hand, at hand in shoots his pity as an unpitied end, that I may live and say the dog is dead! Thou didst prophesy the time would come that I should wish for thee to help me curse that bunchback spider, that bottle toad. I called thee then, vain flourish of my fortune. I called thee then, poor shadow, painted queen. Where is thy husband now? Where be thy brothers? Where be thy two sons? Wherein dost thou joy? Who sues to thee and cries, God save the queen? Where be the bending peers that flatter thee? Where be the thronging troops that follow thee? <laughs> Decline all this and see what now thou art. For happy wife, the most distressed widow, for joyful mother, one that wails the name. Thou art skilled in curses, stay a while. Teach me how to curse my enemy. <laughs> Forbear to sleep the nights and fast the days. Compare dead happiness with living woe. Think that thy babes were fairer than they were, and he that slew them fouler than he is. Revolving this will teach thee how to curse. My words are dull, quicker than with thine. Thy woes will make them sharp and pierce like mine. If so, then be not tongue-tied. Go with me, and in the breath of bitter words, let smother my damned son that thy two sweet sons smothered. I hear his drum. And now at you, O mighty sovereign of our western coast, while the Propusians navy me towards our shore, tis for Richmond is their admiral, and there they are, expecting but the aid of Buckingham to welcome them ashore. Some light-footed friend post to the Duke of Norfolk. Radcliffe, thyself, or, or paint me, where is he? Here I fly to the Duke, post thou to Salisbury. Dull unmindful villain, why stands thou still, and goes thou not to the Duke? First mighty liege, give me your highest pleasure. What from the grace shall I deliver to him? Bid him levy strength, the greatest strength of power that he can make, and meet me presently at Salisbury. Go. Oh, what a great pleasure am I to do in Salisbury? Why, what should you do before I am gone? Hey, your Highness told me I should post before. My mind is changed, sir, my mind is changed. And now, what news with you? None so good, my lord, will please you with my hearing, nor none so bad may well be reported. O oh, day or riddle, neither good nor bad. Once more, Stanley, what news? Richmond is on the seas. Well, there it can sink and be the seas on him, white men and runagate. What doth he there? I know, know not what I guess, my lord. Well, sir, as you guess, as you guess. Uh, stirred up by Bucky Medina, he makes for England here to claim his crown. Is the, is the chair empty? Is the sword unswayed? Is the king dead? Is the empire unpossessed? What error York is there alive but we? And who is England's king but great York's heir? And tell me, what doth he upon the seas? Unless to that, my lord, I cannot guess. Thou wilt revolt and fly to him, I fear. No, my good lord, therefore mistrust me not. Where is thy power, then, to beat him back? Are they not now upon the western shore, safe conducting rebels from their ships? No, no, my good lord, my friends are in the north. Old friends, to Richard, what do they in the north? When they have served their sovereign in the west. They have not been commanded, mighty king. Please, your majesty, give me leave. I will meet your grace where and what time your majesty shall please. Aye, aye. Ah! Thou wilt be gone to join with Richmond. I will not trust you, sir. My lord, you have no more cause to mistrust me. I never have been or never will be false. Ah! Go, master men. But he, leave behind your son. George Stanley, look your faith be firm, or else his hedge assurance is but frail. So deal with him, as I prove true to you. My gracious sovereign, now in Devonshire, Sir Edward Courtney, and the haughty prelate Bishop of Exeter, with many more confederates, are in arms. In Kent, my liege, the Guildfords are in arms, and every hour more competitors flock to the rebels, and their power grows strong. My lord, the army of Great Buckingham! Out on you, Earls! Ah! Bring me better news. The news I have to tell your majesty is that by sudden floods and fall of waters, Buckingham's army is dispersed and scattered, and he himself wandered away alone no matter's weather. I cry you mercy. Here is my purse to cure that blow of thine. 
Has any well advised friend proclaimed a reward to him that brings the traitor in? Such proclamation hath been made, my lord. Sir Thomas Lovell and Lord Marcus Dorset, tis said my liege in Yorkshire. <laughs> For this good comfort bring I to your highness, the Brittany Navy is dispersed by tempest. Richmond has set on the banks of their assistance, yea or no, who answered him. They came from Buckingham, he mistrusting them, hoist sail and made his course again for Brittany. March on, march on! Since we are up in arms, if not to fight with foreign enemies, yet to beat down these rebels here at home. And all the Duke of Buckingham is taken, that is the best news. That the Earl of Richmond is with mighty power landed at Milford is colder news, and yet they must be told. Away towards Salisbury. While we reason here, a royal battle might be won and lost. Someone take order, Buckingham be brought to Salisbury. The rest march on with me. <laughs> Tell Richmond this from me, that in the sty of those deadly boar, my son George Stanley is franked up in hold. If I revolt, then off goes young George's head. Get thee to thy lord, and with all, tell him the queen hath heartily consented that he should espouse Elizabeth, her daughter. But, but where is princely Richmond now? At uh, Pembroke, or at Hartford West in Wales, and many more of great name and worth, and towards London do they bend their power, if by the way they be not fought with all. Hide to the Lord, I kiss his hand, his letter shall resolve him in my mind. Farewell! Who intercepts my expedition? And she that might have intercepted thee by strangling thee in her accursed womb from all the slaughters, wretch! that thou hast done. Tell me, thou villain slave, where are my children? Thou toad, thou toad, where is thy brother Clarence? Where is Rivers and Grey? Where is kind Hastings? Drums, let not the heavens hear these tale-tale women. Uh, Either be patient and entreat me fair, or with a calamitous report of war, thus will I drown your exclamations. Art thou my son? Aye, I thank God, my father and thyself. Oh, let me speak. Do then, but I'm not here. I will be mild and gentle in my words. And brief, good mother, for I am in haste. Art thou so hasty? I have stayed for thee, God knows, in torment and in agony. And came I not at last to comfort you? No, by the holy rood. Thou knowest it well, thou camest on earth to make the earth my hell. A grievous burden was thy birth to me. Tetchy and wayward was thy infancy, thy school days frightful, dreadful, wild and furious, thy prime of manhood, daring, bold and venturous, thy age confirmed, proud, subtle, sly, bloody, more mild but yet more harmful, kind in hatred. What comfortable hour canst thou name that ever graced me with thy company? If I be so disgracious in your sight, let me march on and not offend your grace. I pray thee, hear me speak. You speak too bitterly. Hear me a word, for I shall never speak to thee again. So? Either thou wilt die by God's just ordinance, ere from this war thou turn a conqueror, or I, with grief and extreme age, shall perish and never more behold thy face again. Therefore take with thee my most grievous curse, which in the day of battle tire thee more than all the complete armour that thou wearest. My prayers on the adverse party fight, and there the little souls of Edward's children whisper the spirits of thine enemies and promise them success and victory. Bloody thou art! Bloody shall be thine end. Shame serves thy life, and doth thy death attend. Though far more cause, yet much less spirit to curse abides in me, I say amen to her. Stay, madam. I must speak a word with you. I have no more sons for thee to slaughter. You have a daughter called Elizabeth, virtuous and fair, royal and gracious. she die for this? Or let her live? I'll corrupt her manners. I'll scar her beauty so she may live unscarred of bleeding slaughter. 
I'll confess she was not Edward's daughter. Wrong not her birth. She is of royal blood. To save her life, I'll say she is not so. Her life is only safest in her birth. And only in that safety died her brothers. You speak as if that I had slain my cousins. Uh, cousins, indeed. And by their uncle cousined of comfort, kingdom, kindred, freedom, life. Whose hands soever lance there, tender hearts, thy head, all indirectly gave direction. Then know that from my soul I love thy daughter, and mean to make her queen Ugh. of England. Well then, who doth thou mean shall be her king? Even he that makes her queen, who else should be? What that? I, even I. What think you of it, madam? How canst thou woo her? That that I learn of you, as one that is best acquainted with her humour. Will thou learn of me? Madam, with all my heart. Send to her by the man that slew her brothers a pair of bleeding hearts. Thereon in brave Edward and York. Then haply will she weep. Therefore present to her a handkerchief, which, tell her, did drain the purple sap from her sweet brother's body, and bid her wipe her weeping eyes withal. If this inducement move her not to love, <laughs> This is not the way to win your daughter. There is no other way, unless thou takes on some other form. Look! What is done cannot be now amended. If I did take the kingdom from your sons, to make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. The loss you have is but a son being king, and by that loss your daughter is made queen. Again shall you be mother to a king. Go then, my mother, to thy daughter go. Make bold her bashful years with your experience. Prepare her ears to hear a wooer's tale. Put in her tender heart the aspiring flame of golden sovereignty. Acquaint the princess with the sweet, silent hours of marriage joys. Bound with triumphant garlands will I come and lead thy daughter to a conqueror's bed. What were I best to say to her? That a father's brother shall be her lord. What shall I say, her uncle? Under what title shall I woo for thee? Say she shall be a high and mighty queen. To fail the title as her mother doth. Say I will love her everlastingly. But how long shall that title ever last? Sweetly enforced unto her fair life's end. How long fairly shall her sweet life last? So long as heaven and nature lengthen. As long as hell and Richard likes the Being Be eloquent in my behalf. An honest tale speeds best being plainly told. Then in plain terms, tell her my loving tale. Being then not honest is too harsh a start. Your reasons are too shallow and too quick. <laughs> My reasons are too deep and dead. Too deep and dead, poor infants in their grave. Hard not on that string, madam, that is past. Hard on it shall I till the heart strings break. I swear. Why canst thou swear by now? The time to come. Thou hast wronged in the time or past. In her consists my happiness and thine. Without her death, desolation, ruin and decay, it cannot be avoided but by this. It will not be avoided but by this. Therefore, dear mother, I must call you so. Be the attorney of my love to her. Plead what I will be, not what I have been. Shall I be tempted by the devil, Mr. Ah, if the devil tempt thee to do good. But thou didst kill my children. Heart in your daughter's womb. I'll bury them. I go. Write to me very shortly and you shall understand from me her mind. Bear her my true love's kiss and be a happy mother by the deed. Relenting fool and shallow changing woman.